The panel is uh, on my far right, Bill Carr, uh, Executive Vice President for Digital Media at Amazon. Uh, he's the man in charge of Amazon's new MP3 store. Seated here, immediately to my right, is David Goldberg, Executive Vice President of Ticketmaster, the world's leading ticketing company. Uh, to my left, Paul Hoffert, founder and senior vice president of business development with Noank Media, which is a, a new company with a very interesting business model. Uh, to his left is uh, Denis Oliven, uh, chairman and CEO of France's number one retailer, FNAC. And uh, to his left, we have Greg Scholl, president and CEO of digital distributor The Orchard. Paul Hoffert, you, uh, you're from Noank. Tell us a bit about your business model. No Anc is a spin-off of work that I did at uh, Harvard University at the Berkman Center for Internet and Society along with uh, Professor Terry Fisher who's the chair of our company. And um, the business model is pretty simple. It has two parts. One part is getting the money and the second part is paying the money. Things That's that you probably... radical stuff. Very radical. <laughs> And, uh, and the getting the money part is it's wholesale, so we get the money from ISPs. The second part is that it's a blanket license. So we give the ISP and they give all of their subscribers a license to our entire catalog. And the third part, it's a subscription model with 100% penetration and no opt-in. The price is very low to each subscriber because you get tens of millions, hundreds of millions of, uh, of subscribers. And uh, once you get the money, uh, it's really necessary to pay folks like yourself, to pay the content owners. And to do that in a way that we think is fair, we had to develop technology that would count consumption, uh, which did not exist before we developed it. And so we don't just count downloads as many other folks do. Our counting technology counts actual consumption. How many seconds a person listens to a piece of music or views something, whether they watch the ads, whether they listen to music up till the bridge and then stop listening, uh, whether they look at uh, pages in a PDF document of uh, album covers and bios and all of that kind of stuff. We count how many times you copy it to a CD or a DVD. If you copy it to an iPod, we count that. And when the iPod redocks, we get the count of consumption on the iPod. We take all of that information, which is quite intrusively gathered from the users, and we anonymize it so that we know exactly what was consumed, but we can't say who of the people who are subscribers consumed any individual uh, pieces, which we think is very important for the privacy. Denis, you know, you have physical stores, you, have on, you sell online CDs, you have a la carte downloads, you have subscriptions. Why is that your policy, to, to dabble in everything? Does that, does that work for you? Are you waiting to see which business model works out best in the, in the long run? Well, uh, FNAC, as you said, is, uh, was first uh, a retail morta traditional uh, a traditional retailer on Mortar. We have decided uh, almost 10 years ago to enter into, into new business and we, we have developed a site, FNAC.com, which is the first French site in terms of audience. Um, and we have developed also, we have uh, created also a, a download uh, system for music, video and so on. So today, um, internet business represents maybe 7% of our total turnover, right. but the growth of, of that uh, business is clearly uh, uh, far above the uh, traditional uh, mortar uh, growth. And do you think one day your music business might be entirely digital, all online? Well, as I, as, 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 as I used to say, today FNAC is uh, a, a network of stores with an internet site. Tomorrow it will be an internet site with few stores. Uh, now, Greg, you, uh, you deal with all these uh, models, uh, apart from perhaps David's, uh, on a regular basis. Which one's your favorite? We consider ourselves Switzerland when it comes to pronouncements about uh, <laughs> our many retail clients and services. We, we're a digital 
uh, media services business, um, and we represent a substantial catalog of music and video assets, the digital rights that we control. And we have three constituents. Uh, the primary is the labels and artists or video producers uh, who, who, uh, who supply us with the rights. The second group of constituents are the retailers. And the third group we serve is, is brands and agencies, both in terms of uh, using music for synchronization, but also something that we think is an important um, aspect of the future of media broadly, which is brands becoming production partners for uh, music and video and, and us helping them um, kind of navigate that and, and use music uh, intelligently. So in terms of other models that I admire, I think that there's uh, a lot of innovation happening right now. And I think I admire companies that um, are trying new things and companies that are engaging with tests to see what works and what doesn't. And often what we think about is um, you know, doing short-term deals to understand two things. One is uh, working with a, a service or a model, what value is created, and then is that value equit equitably shared um, across all the people that are participating in it. And if the answer is yes to both, then it's something that we embrace. And if not, it's something that we, we uh, don't renew and pass on. But I do think it's an incredibly dynamic time. And, and uh, um, you know, it's not something that I think is predictable, but just uh, experiment and let the market decide. We're big believers in the power of the consumer to decide what models they want. And then all we have to do is, is um, react to that and service them. Could that model of paying what you like, could that work commercially? Bill, could you, uh, could you ever see Amazon doing something like that with an artist, allowing people to name their price? We've always been, um, we've spent uh, years literally uh, investing heavily in how we think about using our website to learn from customers. And, and we're very simple-minded, frankly, about sort of how we invent. We just invent on behalf of customers through either what they just literally directly tell us um, uh, an example of that being since we launched our MP3 service, they tell us, gee, I don't live in the U.S., I'd like to be able to, to, to buy. So we say, okay, great, why don't we, you know, we'll launch internationally. Or uh, intuiting from their behavior uh, new things. But uh, to come back to your question specifically, yeah, we, we actually have, um, have technology called the Honor System. We haven't done this before, but we'd be happy to do this with any label or artist that wants to, to say, great, let's put your content up on the site and we can let customers choose from a fixed price or they can, they can um, you know, tip or contribute whatever they think the content is worth. We'd be happy to engage in a test like that um, because we could learn from it, we could share that learning and uh, hopefully find a way to um, you know, introduce uh, more and more music to more customers. David, uh, in the live arena, I mean, people are, are buying tickets and then selling them on eBay or whatever for whatever price they they can get. Is the, is the Radiohead model could that work in 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 live ticketing? I think we've seen uh, examples of a lot of different ways of of uh, bundling, as as the title of the panel goes, uh, bundling recorded music with live music. And in some ways, that recorded music gets paid for on top of the live music, on top of the live ticket. And in some ways, it's included in with the ticket price. I think um, the key to the Radiohead model. You know, people often ask, you know, do you think that's the future? I said the the real genius behind it is figuring out what's right for a particular artist at a particular time in their career and what's going on around them. That's that's the smart move. Does that mean that what they did works for other artists? Perhaps, but that's not what you should focus on. You don't focus on just what they did, but what's most important for that artist at that time. And I think by combining live with recorded music, which, by the way, I think that's how fans think of things. They don't really think of themselves as fans of either the recorded product or the live product by a band. They're fans of a band, and they like their music, however it comes. So we're trying to combine that in their heads and, and however a band decides to try and get compensated for it, that's really more up to them and, and their label and whoever else has a say in that mix.